Okay guys, hello and welcome back to another episode of Day in the Life. Now today is the 20th of July, which means I've not done a day in the life for probably over three months and a lot has changed. Now, this morning, typical routine, headed in, grabbed some coffee on my way in this morning. Jordan's just arrived. Um, grabbed a coffee on my way in this morning. I was walking down Buchanan Street and I was thinking about the fourth episode of Day in the Life. I'll play a clip of it just now. In the middle of the day, in the middle of lockdown, there was literally nobody on the streets in Glasgow. And now at like eight in the morning, nine in the morning, there's just like absolutely droves and droves of people. Loads of stuff's changed at KB. Tim is, Tim's changed quite a lot, as you can see. Nah, I'm kidding, that's not Tim. That's Darius, Darius is, he's not exactly a new guy, but in day in the life terms, he's literally about 15 seconds old, but he's been here for a few months. I got married as well, so that was pretty interesting. And also I got rid of the IA. Now, I got an absolutely phenomenal price for the i8. That's kind of like an icon on this channel. It has been for pretty much the whole time I've had the channel. But I got a really, really good price for it and bought loads of crypto. But anyway guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get set up and ready for the day, check over my markets, check in with the members and all that usual good stuff. And then what we'll do is later in the video, we'll talk a little bit about how things have been at KB, how my trading results and that kind of thing have been over the past three months and just kind of fill you in on anything else that's been going on. But anyway guys, I'm gonna get on and get set up for the day and I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Let me share this screen quickly for Asco and we'll talk about this chart super quick. So now, in terms of our fundamentals and what we've got going on in the markets today, that sell off in the dollar has subsequently subsided. We're just kind of tracking sideways now on the dollar, which, you know, we may track. Moving over onto New Zealand dollar, let's talk about this setup that we're looking at for this day ahead. It's pretty interesting dynamic that we've got going on here. We have the market breaking up out of a downtrend. We have the failure of this D1 shooting star here. And we also have a bullish engulfing. We've also had a hammer up off the lows there. Bullish engulfing coming in there, breaking that trend line. This all looks pretty bullish to me. If I just mark out that kind of structure, you can see we've got a bit of a flip support and resistance. I'm just putting this on as a little bit of a reference point. I want to see what that looks like on the lower time frames. But from this time frame, the area I'm looking to target is going to be that next swing just up there. Now, as we drop down onto this 60 minute time frame, you can see that level that I marked in from the daily is an even more interesting level down here on the 60 minute time frame. Now, your day trade safe and I'll catch you tomorrow. Este es Café Número 3. Bien. So it's around about half past four. I've not done a whole lot of filming today, but what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to give you a brief update on some things that have been going on at KB. I'm also going to very I'm going to give a sort of an outline of my crypto portfolio in terms of percentage split. I'm not going to go into the exact financials just yet. Perhaps I'll do that in another video. But I'm going to go over kind of a percentage split between the different tokens and coins that I'm involved in and my sort of thought process and reasoning behind them as well. So in the last day in the life, I believe I spoke a little bit about Trade Club. And if you've been following the channel and our social media as well, you will have seen Trade Club. Basically, at Trade Club, we open up this very trading floor and give traders from all around the world, all experience levels, trading styles, etc. We give them the opportunity to actually join us here on the trading floor from anywhere from one to eight weeks.
We've had people coming from Canada, Brazil, we've had you know people who came from Australia and that kind of thing as well. And that's been super, super interesting. There'll be a link so you can check that out down in the description as well. Now, first off, my own personal trading performance and directly attached to that, the trading performance of the community and our trades and analysis group. Most of you will be aware by now, we offer our private members the opportunity to see exactly the trades I'm taking, I break down those setups and provide management, you know, management cues and all that kind of stuff as well, so that people can kind of follow what I'm doing and understand exactly how I trade and how I perform as well. Now, over Q2, and I'll put sort of slides on screen, I put together a Q2 performance report, but effectively over Q2, I took a total of 38 trades. I risk 1.5% on each trade and I achieved a 14.3% return over Q2. Now my maximum drawdown over that period was 3.7%. My strike rate was 42%. My average win, 2.1%. My average loss, negative 0.9% for an overall profit factor of 1.67. Now when I speak about making 14% over the quarter with a 42% strike rate, for those of you who perhaps you are a beginner trader or maybe even intermediate, or perhaps you've simply had some bad teaching, you'll hear those results and you'll probably think 14% over a three month period, 42% strike rate, that's not very good. Just to break that down into numbers for you, if you were to make 14, we'll just round up to 15, if you were to make 15% every quarter of the year, 15 times four, that's 60% returns for the year. Now, if you were to keep that in an account and compound that, making 60% each year for three years, if you were to start with a £100,000 or dollar trading account, at the end of those three years, you would have over a £400,000 or dollar trading account. So in three years, you would make four times your initial trading account size, which is huge, huge returns. Now, I'm not expecting to make consistently 60% each year. And again, for many of you, you'll listen to that and say, that doesn't sound like great results. But this is the realities of trading. We must have realistic expectations. We're not here to make 100% every trade. We're not here to make 50%, you know, month on month. There will be months in your career, potentially, where you'll make 20, maybe even 30%. But these will be, these will be more the exception rather than the rule. And it's very, very important that we have those realistic expectations. We're not looking to make crazy huge returns on one or two trades. We're not looking to make you know, a 90 or a 100% strike rate. Having small, consistent, you know, small to medium sized, consistent conservative gains over time is absolutely the name of the game when it comes to trading. Now, to touch on the crypto portfolio side of things. I was always someone who was pretty biased against crypto. I was always in favor of traditional finance. I was always very skeptical about cryptocurrency. However, back in the start of probably 2020, we had a trader join our trading floor by the name of Alex. Great, great trader, great guy. And he was very, very interested in crypto. And he started to sort of open my mind up a little bit to the possibilities with cryptocurrency if there was to ever be future adoption, which he was pretty confident that there would be. Now, around this time, Ripple ended up in a lawsuit with the SEC, right? The, Secur the Securities Exchange Commission in the US. And subsequently, the price of Ripple absolutely collapsed, the price of XRP rather, absolutely collapsed to down around 20 cents. I saw this as a good opportunity to get some cryptocurrency pretty cheap. And so I took my first steps into the cryptocurrency market by acquiring, you know, maybe 5,000 XRP tokens or 10,000 XRP tokens, something like that. And that was my first steps into the crypto markets. Now, since then, I have been doing extensive study and research into projects, understanding the sort of utility, understanding whether it's, you know, something that's just understanding whether it's something that's simply hype or whether there is actually utility and a use case behind that asset. Now, 
over the past probably two years, my portfolio split currently looks like this. And I'm pretty happy with this. Now I did scale a lot into these assets in the recent sort of downturn that we've had, Bitcoin in around sort of 17 to $19,000. That's when I started to really add into my crypto portfolio. So currently my crypto portfolio is made up of 26% Ethereum, 13.7%, 14% XRP, 12% Bitcoin, 3.3% Elrond, we have 5% in Polygon Matic, 2% in BNB Binance Coin, 3.88% in UTK, 5.3% in Luna Classic. We have around 1% in Sheeb, half of a percent in Doge, half of a percent in Walkin, which is a move token that's just recently launched, and I have 1% in Umbrella Network. Now I do also have 23% in UST. Now for those of you who have your ear to the ground on the crypto market, you're thinking Luna Classic and UST, why are you even touching those things? Well, very similar to the XRP situation, I see both Luna Classic and USD as very high risk reward opportunities. If you're unaware of the whole calamity that happened with Luna and with UST back in May, please go and do some research on it. It's absolutely insane. But effectively, the value of Luna Classic went from $120 to less, much less than one cent. And UST, which was supposed to be a stable coin at $1, collapsed to below one cent as well. So seeing that both of these were heavily community backed instruments, I decided to take a speculative investment on both of these assets at very, very low prices. And I believe that in the coming years, even if they only recover ever so slightly, I do believe that both of these will pay off pretty significantly. So that's pretty much it with regards to the exciting updates. I will aim to make a video potentially in future if you guys are interested in it, going through a really sort of meticulous breakdown of my crypto portfolio and that kind of thing. I could do a video specifically dedicated towards that. I know my audience here is mostly traditional finance, FX, indices, commodities, that kind of thing. But if you'd be interested in that, make sure to let me know and I'll see if we can get that arranged. Anyway, I'm gonna get wrapped up for the day and then I'm gonna head to the gym. So I just got back from the gym. I'm just doing a little bit of end of day prep, currently sipping on some protein as well. And then I'm gonna do a bit, little bit of reading and get ready to head home. Now, the New Zealand dollar trade that you saw me breaking down for members on our morning call at the start of this video, I've actually been filled long on New Zealand dollar and then a short setup came available. So I'm actually both long and short on New Zealand dollar at the moment. I'll give you a quick look at that. So you can see here, we're long from this point in here as we outlined for our members at the start of the video. So that's running about half an hour in profit. A short setup became available overnight last night. And subsequently when we broke down this morning, I got a little order in there for short as well. So this short position is just sitting around break even, the long position around about half an hour up. So as I say guys, gonna get wrapped up for the day, do a little bit of reading and then look dead home. That's pretty much it for this episode of Day in the Life, guys. It feels good to be back. If you did enjoy it, please do drop it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you're looking for any kind of trading education, perhaps you're a beginner or even an intermediate trader and you're looking to take things to the next level, check out the top link in the description. You'll see all of the education we offer at KB. It would be an absolute pleasure to welcome you to the team. But that's it from me for today, guys. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.